From Heart to Hanger is where fashion tales come alive. Dive into the personal stories of people from the fashion world, designers, style lovers, and fashion influencers. Discover how life experiences shape our style through everyday conversations. Explore fashion trends and embark on a self-discovery journey to find your own style. Be part of a lively community where sharing the love for fashion is the everyday style. It's your backstage pass to the playful, fashion-filled journey from the heart to the hanger. It's more than just about clothes. It's about the magic of fashion that binds us all. Get ready to be a part of the story where every episode is a runway of ideas and stories waiting to be shared. Welcome everyone to this second episode of Heart to Hanger. I'm Britt Smith, my co-host Paige Andreas, the beauty and brains I like to say behind her brand. I'm super excited to dive deep into this career trajectory and we're going to unravel this career cocoon of yours. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. I've um, I've had quite the resume of okay. jobs so far. So yeah. well, let's hear about it. Like I want to know what brought you to this stage in your life where you have your own fashion brand? How, like what were all the things you did before? <laughs> yeah. So um, for the most part, I mean, they were all in the beauty and fashion industry. Uh, however, there were a few like, you know, little side gigs along the way. So um, we'll just skip all those like, you know, high school jobs. We had many of those, but oh, yeah. when I... <laughs> <laughs> Safeway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> love it. Let's not I mean, go back actually, that far. Yeah, I actually love mine. I was a lifeguard. And, oh, that was um, cool. Yeah, and I waitressed too. And it's so, like, when I tell people this, they're like, you waitressed when you were 14, but apparently in small town Saskatchewan, you don't have to be of age. So, um, interesting. I mean, I couldn't carry the alcohol to people. Like, I couldn't serve yeah. them, but I could still take the order. So, what restaurant? Um, I worked at Jenny's okay. Steakhouse, um, the BC Cafe, okay. which was Chinese food. Mm. And then I also worked at the TX restaurant. Okay. So yeah, I had I had a lot of jobs, well, you know, from a young age. I had to support that um, that you know expensive taste from a young age. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward, I um, I attended hair school. So then uh, straight, I feel like I really entered the work force young because all my friends were like at university they get their summers off but it was basically 10 months and I was off I went and during that time I worked um at a country bar I also worked at a doctor's office as a receptionist and um, booking specialist appointments and then I also worked part-time doing hair at one point I was working like seven days a week just to pay the minimum bills but you know had to grind it out for a while to get going and um Yeah, I had been doing hair for a few years, and then I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. I wasn't loving it. It definitely wasn't my passion. So I thought, okay, I'm going to move back to Swift Current, live with my family, save money, and Mm -hmm. then start over. I wasn't sure what yet, but I was starting over. Well, about two months before I moved, I'd already gave notice at my job. I had got out of the place I was renting. I was like living out of a friend's basement and I met my now husband. Okay. So yeah, um, my hometown of Swift Current. Yes. But I met him in Edmonton. Oh, weird. So yes. Um, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So um, where I was supposed to be moving Swift Current is where he's from initially, Mm -hmm. but we met in Edmonton. So um, that's another story my dad loves to tell. He basically, (laughs) they paid to have this like U-Haul brought it up. They packed up all my stuff. And the moment I stepped through the door, I said, just so you guys know, I'm planning to move away right away again. <laughs> and my parents were like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like, I met a guy and I'm not staying here. <laughs> so yeah, so I moved to Swift Current and I worked at um, a salon there called Fusion. Oh yeah. And it's the first time I actually loved doing hair. So like, I was like, you know what? Maybe I do like doing hair. Like, this is awesome. I had, you know, my clientele was starting to grow and I just felt right. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, it's where life makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's the slogan in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does make sense. I guess, maybe. <laughs> but we, we both no longer live there now, so. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, um, of course, I 
had fallen in love. So I was going to go back to Edmonton and I just, I didn't have it in me to start over again at another salon, mm-hmm. getting kind of like all the walk-in clients and all the like just mini yeah. appointments. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was like, I honestly, I don't, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to live there. So at the time, my husband and his brother and their cousin, they had, um, they had started a company and they were like, well, I think you could work for us for the summer. And I was like, okay. Wasn't it like a, la- isn't it like a landscaping company? Yes. Yeah, yeah. A landscape snow removal company. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, but what would I do? And they were like, <laughs> well, you get to pick weeds, pick garbage and like, you know, prune shrubs fun. and rake leaves. And I was like, okay, I guess this might be fun. I guess I get to be outside. So anyways, we always laugh about that now because that was not my favorite job. Right. right. <laughs> but you know, we uh, stuck it's, it it's out memories. for love. Yeah, we stuck it out. <laughs> we were in the thick of it. So I did that. And then I worked part-time at a gym and in the meantime I got a job as an office coordinator for an electrical company wow so I'm just you know yep. going, going all over the place page of all trades right yeah here. yeah exactly so this is the whole reason this is important is because you can really see I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what I want and this whole time I'm just like denying the fact that I need to be back in like the beauty and fashion industry so but I knew I didn't want to do hair. So I'm like, I think I need to go back to school. Like, I think I need to have some like education behind me. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So I signed up to be part of the program to take sales and marketing at Nate. And, um, within a couple months of going to school full time, I was like, Whoa, I've been working since I was like 13. Mm -hmm. I need to make some money. So I decided to start taking night classes and I got a job um, as I worked for a sales hair distributor company, and I sold like hair product to salons. Okay. So that's kind of how I jumped back into the industry. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was going to school, and then within that time, I actually got a phone call from Hudson's Bay, and they were inquiring um, if I would like to fulfilled their first position as a personal shopper at the Southgate location. So they had never had a personal shopper before. It was more um, Toronto, Vancouver, and Calgary. And they were implementing this new program. And somehow my name had been thrown out to them. Cool. So I wasn't looking, Mm -hmm. but it just came came upon me. And I was like, well, I might as well interview for it. Like, this sounds amazing. Um, Long story short, I ended up working there. And it was so such a cool and unique job. Um, But I still didn't feel like that was it. Mm -hmm. So I thought about, I'm like, what do I love about this job? So my favorite part about it was like making people try on stuff that they were like, oh my God, I hate that. (laughs) Or I would never. And then the way they were like, okay, you were right. And just kind of seeing their face light up. Um, I would get phone calls. I had this guy come into the store and he looked so flustered and he was like, he just looked in distress and I it was my first week on the job and I didn't know what I was doing. So I walked up to him and I'm like, hi, um, I'm, I'm the new personal shopper. I don't have my office yet or anything set up, but can I help you? And he's like, oh my goodness, I have this interview tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to wear. So um, I ended up picking out an outfit for him and he was like my first ever customer. And I actually got a phone call to Hudson's Bay a week later from this man who wanted to speak to me. And he literally was like, I just have to call you. You made me feel so confident. And I truly believe you're the reason I got the job. Aww. How sweet is that? I was like, I mean, I didn't want to take credit for it. Cause I was like, no, like you obviously were meant. For-. He's like, no, honestly. And so he was my first client and he came back the whole time I was working there. Aww, I, love um, I ended up shopping for his wife too. Like it, it turned wow. into like a really cool relationship. And I had, I helped everyone from like, I think my oldest client was 85. She was so sweet. Like, I think sometimes she just wanted to come to hang out, which was so nice. We'd have coffee and whatever, but it truly was about like the connection and the way that Mm -hmm. it made people feel not so much like the picking out all the clothes and hauling them and like working in a retail, um, like environment. That part wasn't my favorite, but I I definitely love the connection. So 
from there, I ended up going back into the hair industry because I was like, I still haven't, I'm still not there. Mm -hmm. I haven't found what, what I'm supposed to do. So I started working as a brand specialist for Kevin Murphy. Okay. Also super cool job. Um, I got to meet Kevin himself. We were like on a trip in Cancun together. It was fun. Yeah, (laughs) it was so fun. His husband, super fun. Like we, we had the best time and it really was a cool job and I learned a lot and I met a lot of awesome people from around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it, it helped me like build my confidence and, yeah, you sure. know, public speaking and just like all around being more mm-hmm. confident. Um, but I traveled a lot. I had Saskatchewan, Alberta and Manitoba as my, yeah, as my area that I had to cover. And I knew I wanted to start trying to have kids. So I was like, Hey, like, I think I need to stay at home and yeah that makes it hard when you're trying to start a family (laughs) yeah Yeah. so I'm like I think I need to find something closer so once again here I am I'm like I'm almost 30 Mm -hmm. and I have just been changing jobs like nonstop. I'm like how come it feels like everyone around me is just like finding their thing and sticking to it and I don't know. At this point, I'm like, am I ever going to find something I love? Mm -hmm. So one of my friends who owned a clothing boutique downtown called Miss Boss, she, I shop there all the time. And she's like, you know what? Like you could come work for me part time. And I was like, honestly, like I'm not in it for the money right now. I just want something that's like fun and enjoyable because I know I'm planning to have kids. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being so fun. I felt like I just was like shopping every day I helped her like do a couple of the buying shows I wrote the blog for her store and it really got me like getting into that creative fashion mindset Mm -hmm. I was like starting to see like how all the clothes come together and um when I'd write the blog I really like became even more and more passionate about fashion even though I always was but I'm like okay I just like love fashion Mm -hmm. this is this is perfect then I got pregnant then I had my daughter and then COVID and kind of how we touched on the first episode. Right. That's when I was just like at that low. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm now 30 and I still don't have a career and I still don't feel like I'm where I ever seen myself being. And uh, even though yeah. a mom is like the most important career <laughs> we'll it, ever have in our lives. Yes. Let's just throw that out there. Yes. And <laughs> I, I definitely... I know like sometimes I'm like okay I hope that didn't come off wrong because I would never trade being a mom and I would never trade like getting being like having that opportunity Mm -hmm. to stay home with my kids like even now doing this this career full-time I still like I don't even want to explore like not having my kids home with me because I love it um but it's just like I was missing my own thing on top of that so yeah that's kind of like the roller coaster ride of my journey to getting to this place um and just like to add to that like knowing you as a friend I know that you obviously adore and love your family you wouldn't trade it for the world yes exactly um but I just wanted to throw that out there because I know how great of a mom you are but yet you also want and I I feel it too as a mom you also want another part of your, I, you still, ha, you still are your own person yes. as well as being a mom and you want something else on top of that, you know, and yes. kudos to all the moms that can be just a stay at home mom. 100%. Cause that is the hardest job ever. Oh, it, it so is the <laughs> yeah. amount of times I've like looked at my husband and been like, can I go to work for you today? Yeah. Because like, <laughs> this is literally the hardest job yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> And like before we started this podcast, I'm like, I don't remember the last time I had an adult conversation. Like, so hopefully this goes okay. Right. Um, <laughs> You're used to like singing the wiggles yeah. and oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just, the Moana it's, soundtrack on repeat. Yes. Yeah. I mean, which is great too, but yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah, it's, we miss, sometimes we really miss like what we were like before mm-hmm. kids. And it's fun to have that outlet yeah. where you can, you know. And I just feel like you have like this other like entrepreneurial um, hat on as well. And you want to have your own success outside of your home. 100%. I get that. And honestly, it's, I have always, since I was like, I, because I had started to work so young, 
I like to make my own money. Yeah. So that's like for me, I like to spend money <laughs> and it's just kind of feels a little better when it's your, your own. A hundred percent. Gosh, yeah. that's where I'm at right now. Cause yeah. and my husband is, if he ever listens to this, he'll be like, <laughs> you've been spending my money for a lot of years, girl. Like when are you going to get it together and start making <laughs> and your that's own the thing? Like yeah. they, they're supportive oh, and yeah. they don't care, but it's just like, it's my own guilt of like, it's almost like you feel like you need permission, yeah. even though they they don't say that. It's just no. like, but when it's your own, it's it's different. And it, for some reason, when you buy stuff with your own money, you have like this different sense of yeah pride with it. For I sure. Know. I 100%. get it. Like what yours is mine. Everyone has their own mm-hmm. way of doing that. But I'm just saying my own personal yeah. experience. I was like, I want to make my own money. And then you can't be like, you don't need another pair of shoes. Right. <laughs> I'll be like, it's mine. <laughs> you're, you're a boss, babe. And yeah. I love it. Um, so just tell me how the idea of Ariana Andreas took shape. Okay. So. It's a, probably a loaded question. Yes. <laughs> um, like I mentioned in the first podcast, it was something that would often come up over a bottle of wine. Uh, pre-kids and it was kind of more at that point just a dream it was just like you know you always think about what would be the ideal Mm -hmm. career for you Um, but it was two Christmases ago uh, that what year would have that taken us back to my math year year right now 2021 yeah so it would have been the Christmas of 2021 on the way because we're in 23 right yeah yeah okay Oh, here we go again. Um, Yeah, so we were driving home for Christmas, and my husband was, like, really into this idea for me. He was, like, pushing me along, and he's like, okay, like, how do we do this? How do we get started? And we were both like, okay, we have no idea. Um, This is, like, completely foreign. Like, I had worked in the fashion industry, but from, like, a totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, well, I guess the first thing is I need designs. Mm -hmm. So I... Literally, like over Christmas, I started sketching. Um, we kind of, and she's an awesome sketcher, by the way. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I could do it all day, every day. Sometimes I actually get frustrated because I'm like, I just want to be drawing, I don't want to be cooking food or <laughs> yeah. cleaning, I just want to draw. Who wants to cook? Uh, yeah, exactly, not me. Um, yeah, so that was the first step, but this is how far we took it. So on the drive back, we kind of talked about, like, when would we do this? So we decided, okay, well, we're obviously going to have to do this once. Our, at the time, we only had Gigi, so we're like, once she's in bed, we will get to work, and we'll okay. figure out what we're going to do. So we literally set up our computers. We got on Amazon, and we ordered a book on how to sew, we literally thought we were going to be able to sew our own clothes. Okay. Like, this is how naive we were. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, ignorance is bliss because yes. <laughs> we didn't know what we were in for. I love how your husband, though, <laughs> wanted to sew. He was yeah. going to sew for you. He was, like, hardcore. Like, okay. he was, like... Then the next thing we did was we downloaded a 3D rendering program, and we spent several nights in a row trying to sew on the 3D rendering. Okay, this sounds very interesting. And we'd get it all put together, and then we'd hit, like, render... And it would all fall to the floor. And we were like, okay, (laughs) what are we doing wrong here? Like, this this is not working for us. We need to speed up this process. Um, And I mean, it was was great and all. um, But we were like, hey, we need to definitely, like, take this to the next level. Um, Fast forward about a week. I was, like, feeling a little bit, you know off Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I was like I think I might be pregnant um we had been trying since the summertime and this was now January and so at this point I was like hey well I'm not gonna wait around forever I want to like start Mm -hmm. this career um but we're like literally like a week into it and then boom pregnant okay and I was like super excited obviously but I'm like remembering back to Gigi and I'm like oh man this is gonna be so hard to do this because I'm gonna start feeling so sick um, which I did, but that's another story. We battled through it right. and made it happen. So at this point, I'm like trying to stay focused. I'm like, okay, hey, we're growing this. So we're like, I think we need to add like another company. And so there's a lot of these like middlemen, like kind of production companies where they basically help you take your ideas or your sketches and 
connect you with the people that you need to be connected with. Okay. So a lot of times they have their um, own staff that make the tech packs, which would be like they turn your sketch into an actual item that can be made. So like sew patterns, okay. um, like just making it so that it's actually like it's in, you can have it in your hands yeah or, well it's more so like because a sketch it's not like proportionate it's oh, not okay. done in like it's not it can't yeah I, I guess I'm just rambling on I'm it's it's hard to put from paper to into it, yeah real into life. the program because yeah. okay. like where you want to get is like the end product of a tech pack is supposed to be what you can give to a manufacturer for them oh, to turn okay. it into the garment oh, okay right okay. so I really wanted to learn like and be a part of that process. Um, of course, the company we ended up working with wasn't in Calgary here. Okay. Uh, so that was a little bit hard. We did a lot of Zoom meetings and we phone calls and emails. Um, and so I got I got the gist of it. And of course, I always had like final say in mm-hmm. everything. But I real I still that is like one thing I want to do is like learn how to make a tech pack okay. myself. I think that would be really cool to just like understand the basics. Um, and how it all comes together. So yeah, so that's what we did. First, we hired a company mm-hmm. out of uh, Vancouver that kind of helped us create these tech packs, and they had the connections with the suppliers and manufacturers, oh, okay. right? So like, when you're new to the industry, it's really hard to break in, and it's also hard to get like good low minimums, good mm-hmm. pricing. They see you as like, these people are, they're probably just going to be like a one-time thing, like we're just going to take them for their money right. and and run type of thing. Right. Um, so it is really about who you know. And so during this whole time, um, you know, of course, my husband's help with his business background was very necessary because I didn't know all this stuff like coming up with the name, mm-hmm. trademarking the name, lawyers, accountants, like all of that stuff that I wouldn't have known where to begin. Mm-hmm. We joined like... Um, like different programs where you could meet people in the fashion industry okay. around the world. We had a girl from Europe doing our 3D renderings wow. for us. Like we really dove in like okay. head first. We were, I spoke to a lady who used to work for Kate Spade. I talked to a lady who was like the top buyer for Saks in New York for many years. Um, I just like consulted with so many people that really well, really kind of made me think deeper. I'm not going to say that I always felt confident. I definitely uh, cried after a few calls because (laughs) I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) But they just really want you to be able to know like why you started your brand and like where you see it going. And yeah, there's just so, it's so hard to explain because I feel like there's just so many things we've done in the last two Mm -hmm. years. But, um, yeah, I I feel like I could ramble in circles forever and I get totally sidetracked. That's like one of my worst traits. I'm like, what was I, what, what was I supposed to answer again? That's why I'm here, right? (laughs) That's what I'm supposed to be here to help. (laughs) Um, no, okay. But I'm like kind of nerding out because I don't know anything about the fashion world and industry and I can't even imagine how hard it is to start your own brand. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yes, you probably meet all these people in between before you even get like a product in your hand that are probably questioning everything about you. Like they don't want to waste on their time on someone that's not actually like all in and serious. Exactly. And I feel like you guys just, you did all that. You went all in. I'm like, I feel like you can't just go halfway in with something like this. You got to go bigger, go home. Yes. So I feel like you guys have been true to that since the start do you think that's one of the reasons where how you got to where you are now a hundred percent like I it's one of those industries I do think a ton of people do try to break into and it has this rap for being like really really hard to get into and I honestly think it's because whatever you think it's gonna cost quadruple that (laughs) Um, so you have to be ready to take major risks, right. like major risks. Um, the time you think it's going to take, quadruple that. Um, and just go in not pretending like you know anything. You have to be like open to like all the advice and then don't be afraid to be like, 
I don't know what I don't know what you mm-hmm. mean. Can you explain that? Because the lingo that they use is was stuff I had never even heard of. And right, like you don't want to do the fake it till you make it. I don't right. think because that's not going to get you anywhere, no. right? So I think you have to be like really open minded, willing to learn, um, and not give up. Yeah. There's been there's been some times where mm-hmm. you're just like, honestly, it's been two years and we haven't sold anything because we haven't we don't have we haven't gone to production yet, mm-hmm. and that's wow. like that's a hard thing to sustain, mm-hmm. right? But I just feel like deep down, I just, I know it's going to work out. I, I mean that, yeah, you can't say that for sure, but I've always put those like good vibes into the universe. And I just have this feeling like deep down where I'm like, mm-hmm. I will do anything to make this work and I'm not quitting. Yeah. Well, this so, is your passion and it's yeah. what you love and you're good at it. So, and you've gone all in and I just think you've made beautiful pieces and I think you're just at this really cool I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just think you're at this cool stage now where you actually have pieces in front of you and maybe you're close to starting to sell. But yeah, going back, um, I like it brings up um, something that we preach a lot in yoga, like the beginner's mind. I love that you still have that. You know, I love how you're not faking being like an expert, even even though you know way more than the (laughs) average person about fashion and everything that goes with it. Um, So thanks for dumbing down that process. Yes. I mean, well, as you can see, talking about the tech packs, I still like I don't. The reason I have trouble explaining it is I still don't have like that full understanding of the lingo. So um, I I can I can look at it and understand it, but I have trouble like putting it into words still. Well, I appreciate the vulnerability and authentic side of that. Yeah. Um, And just like going back again, like the economics, like you said, like quadrupling the price, the time it takes for all this stuff. Like I can't even imagine the economics behind all of this and what it is to, you know, start to a finished product, product, what all that entails even. But if you want to like sort of go more in depth about, um, I don't know, you don't have to tell us how much you've like spent on stuff, but, um, (laughs) how do you, how do you choose people that you work with? Because I know like being Canadian, that's obviously like keeping it like more local and true to who you are is important to you. But there's this whole economic side of things where like, well, Making stuff in Canada is probably super hard because, yes. like you're saying, it's expensive. That's why probably lots of stuff gets made in China. Ex- so how do you go about choosing 100%. People? It's So, of course, right off the bat, I knew, like, what was most important to me. If you want to look good and feel good in your clothes, they have to be good quality. It's It kind of sucks sometimes to bite that bullet, but I'm sorry, if you're wearing something that's made really well... Mm-hmm. Um, you just feel different in it. It fits you different. Mm -hmm. Um, So that I knew I really wanted to use high end fabrics and I knew I wanted the construction to be like flawless. So right away, kind of like top of mind, I wanted it to be made in either Canada, US or Europe. Those were sort of like at the top of my list. But like you said, with that comes like a higher price point. Um, And we did explore other routes for sure. Um, Our initial samples were made... um, in Taiwan and for the price point I just felt like we weren't quite there um and you know if you were going for like a kind of like a fast fashion brand Mm -hmm. it probably would have been perfect but I'm really focusing on like less waste and creating clothes that can be like passed down live in your wardrobe build on your your wardrobe Mm -hmm. um and not like add to that because as you know the fashion industry is like a very very wasteful industry and it has like a huge impact yeah on like Mm -hmm. it's just it's incredible like I don't know if this is true or not but we went to South America a few years ago and we had the experience of going to the Atacama Desert okay it was amazing it was like the most beautiful place ever um, and since then, I've heard that it's become like a dumping ground for like fast fashion. So, so don't sad. quote me on that. Yeah. But I just like, I don't know. That makes me so sad because I'm like, yeah. this is such like a gorgeous untouched place. Mm-hmm. And now it's like because they're running out of places to yeah. put it. So long story short, I I just really wanted to uh, find a place that was on board with that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so there's multiple ways of going about that. Uh, a lot of it has to do with these production companies. Like it's who do they work with? Okay. So we did end up um, moving to a, a different company to work with and they were based out of, um, out of the States and they actually had, I don't quote me on this either, but around 11 of their own manufacturers. So a, everything was made right in the U S Okay. and with that came like a significant price increase. Right. So, I mean, I feel like if your product is, if it can stand behind the price, then, mm-hmm. then I'm definitely willing to do that. Um, but we're always exploring where we're looking into other manufacturers. We've explored, um, different places mm-hmm. around the world. So we haven't, I, I don't want to say we've landed on like where our forever items are going to be made. Um, but mm-hmm the focus will always be on the quality. Right. And that's something I can say about your, your pieces. Um, like when you put them on, you can just tell they are expensive. Like they (laughs) are made with the best quality. And I don't know if it's me growing up a bit and maturing because for sure, I feel like I've fallen victim to fast fashion when I was younger because, Oh, me too. Yeah. Which is, and which is terrible. Like you're, yeah. you're buying into that world that's, you know, destroying our world. But, um, so when I buy clothing now, I would rather spend more money on something that's going to last me, lo- last me longer, yeah. feel good on my body and not disrespect our planet. Yes. I, I agree. And like, I also, this could be getting older as well or post having kids, but like, I just can't do uncomfortable clothes no. anymore. I'm like, I do Impact. not have time for this. Yeah. Like this, I, I used to be like, no pain, no gain, <laughs> fashion, beauty's pain. Like I had all these like mantras that I would say and I feel like it it's worth it that way it's, anymore. No, yeah. it yeah. really doesn't. And at the end of the day, my grandma used to always say to me, she's like, she's like, do your feet hurt? And I was like, why? Because I was like notorious for wearing heels. Okay, yeah. And she was like, wear. I can see it on your face. And it's like, so apparently my mantras weren't working because I looked like I was in pain. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so, too good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, just with, I guess, a little bit more on that. Um, I, I don't want to name any like brand names yeah. because... <laughs> maybe some people like them but I know that I will not buy certain brands um because I wear them once and then they look like garbage yeah. or they're they they get stretched out they they're just they don't hold up and yeah. it's so frustrating and I just yeah I just thank you for bu- making something that can live in my closet probably outlive me <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to think about that no. but we're not oh, that old. But we do have hopes for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's that makes me actually think about one of my what well, one of my friends said to me the other day when I was telling her about the clothes. She's like, she's like, um, you either spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a jacket or you buy a jacket for less three times. I know. Yeah. And the one that was a thousand dollars lasts longer, so now you've actually spent less. And it looks it looks better because yeah. it's better quality you're gonna look better and feel better it's true and it's yeah I mean I understand that of course we we are living in like a economical like downturn or Mm -hmm. with like you know a lot of people aren't spending their money on clothes but I just think if you buy like smarter yeah and maybe think like okay this year I'm gonna buy myself like one nice new piece instead of like trying to keep up with the Kardashians whatever like like it's impossible to keep up with trends. Yeah. Like the odd time I find myself like a victim of that where I'm like, oh, I need, I need to get on that trend. And then by the time I actually like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. Then all of a sudden, like you hear a blogger be like, oh my goodness, that was so like last yeah. month. And I'm like, oh my Dang. God, like, why did I even waste my yeah. money? And it's so frustrating. It so like, I really want to, make items that like are more timeless Mm -hmm. not to say I'll I'll never toss in like a really cool piece that is more like current with the time Mm -hmm. um but I do think the foundation needs to be like very um timeless yeah I love that yeah um so we touched a little bit uh, maybe on the last episode but and we know that your family is 
a huge support, especially your husband, just like pushing you to drive that passion of yours um, into something real and tangible. Um, But are there any significant people or events, I guess, that really, really pushed you into making this leap into fashion this way? Yeah, you know what? I I almost like 100% credit it to my husband, Keegan. He, um, he's definitely been like my number one cheerleader, I guess mm-hmm. you could say, through this all. Um, it's so funny to me because like it's completely different from the industry that, that his other full-time job right. is in. But, um, landscaper to <laughs> sewer, seamstress, <laughs> seamster. I don't know. Yes. But he is always like, he just lives for the thrill of starting businesses and he loves learning and he just loves like, you know, expanding mm-hmm. in every way possible. Um, so I would say he, he has been like the person pushing me the hardest through cool. this whole thing. Like, like I said, I've had nothing but support from the rest of my family. And of course, like, I've lots of times like asked my mom or sisters or my mother-in-law like what do you guys think of this and then I'll send like two different drawings and what do you like better I'll send um, a 3d rendering and be like do you like the pattern small or big or in between and I definitely love getting like feedback from everyone but on the day-to-day grind of like Mm -hmm. my husband comes home and I'm like I have had like a terrible day I don't feel like he'd be like okay we just got to get through this like we just yeah we have to like it's we're, we're in it. Yeah. We got to keep going. So yeah, like I'm sure every day um, comes with its own unique challenges. And your passion of, for fashion runs so deep. But how do you get inspired every day to keep to keep pushing this brand that you created? How do you keep, I guess, maybe Was there any moments of doubt that you have faced? I'm sure not every like day was glorious, glamorous and fun sketching stuff. I'm sure you've had some (laughs) moments where you've maybe questioned yourself and um, how did you overcome it? I think for me is like I the how bad I want this Mm -hmm. is just like I can't even put it into words like I just I know, and I've said this before, like how powerful fashion is. And I just feel like so many people don't. And Mm -hmm. I just, I really want to empower women. Like, I feel like that's such a, we live in a world where a lot of times like people think, oh, I don't want to share any of my knowledge or I don't want to tell anyone Mm -hmm. like who I worked with or like, I don't want to save them steps because I had to go through that because we were worried that other people are going to like outshine us or outperform us. But really that is like, that's how you get ahead is by like helping other women. And I've always, I've always really like been a people person and I love like talking and (laughs) telling people about stuff. So I feel like it's, it's half like, I can't wait to get to a point where I have that ability to empower women and help show them how to put outfits together and have them wearing my clothes. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's just like being able to live out that childhood dream. Like I'm, my pride is like, I, I refuse to quit. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up. I've told way too many people and, um, (laughs) and we are seeing this through. I love it. You just put it out into the universe and watch the magic unfold with a lot of hard work. Yes. Yes. (laughs) There is, there's a lot of late nights. Mm -hmm. Um, just recently, actually, I, because we've decided to move forward with this, uh, 3d knitting company, I, I was finding it a bit hard to communicate my sketches when they would ask me stuff in regards to like the gauge of the fabric or like, oh, we can do this stitch, but not this stitch. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like I just, I have so much to learn. I'm like, I am getting on the internet right now and signing up for a knitting class. (laughs) And within a week I found myself sitting in a room with, I was about half the age, (laughs) um, learning how to knit. Cool. And The first night I came home, I tried to fix a mistake and I ended up with a ball of yarn and I, I undid everything that I had learned in class. And in the morning, my husband said to me, Oh, remember when you thought you would be so good at knitting (laughs) and just that alone, I'm so stubborn. I was like, I will show you. And I stayed up till two in the morning, two nights in a row, even though I had to be up at six both mornings. 
and um, I knitted that damn thing. Good and it looked you. good when it was done. What did you knit? It's like um, a scarf, okay. but it, I don't even know exactly what you would call it. I feel like it wouldn't be something we would wear per right. se. It like does up with a button in oh, the front. Yeah. It's okay. like a neck warmer. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'll be perfect for Canada. Yep. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I oh. I got her done. I watched a lot of videos. I, I, there was a lot yeah. of swearing involved, but it, it got done. <laughs> I feel like you don't give yourself enough credit because um, you – you are very talented in what you do. You know what you want. You know all of all of the things about fashion, which the average person like moi wouldn't <laughs> know. Um, but I love how you're still learning and you're like walking the walk, talking the talk. Like you're you're in the trenches, learning absolutely everything you can. Just because I just I love that because um, it makes me know that everything that you design is going there's going to be so much thought Mm -hmm. and love put into it yeah thank you (laughs) I mean it's always nice when people do see that like all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and that Mm -hmm. there is so much more to it and I just I can just tell you guys firsthand that the reason we have been delayed so many times is I refuse to settle like it's if if it's not to my standards I'm not proceeding like I don't care if we need to make money or if we need Mm -hmm. to we're gonna miss the season it's like making it on time and selling and only getting one sale ever because people receive it and they're like this is crap that's not what I'm going for so you can rest assured that when it finally does get here (laughs) it's gonna be perfect (laughs) to the highest standards yes of Paige I love it (laughs) Okay, so how did your friends and family react when you decided to make this leap? You came up with your brand name. You put it out into the universe. You said you're going all out. I'm doing this thing. I'm making my own fashion line. What was the consensus or reaction from peeps? Honestly, it was just like a lot of excitement. And then also like a lot of, oh, yeah, that's so you. Like we knew you would always do something like this. Um, And it was almost like people seen it more in me than I seen it in me. It mm. was like, they were like, yeah, this, this is definitely for you. And there was never, I never felt any doubt from anyone, which definitely helped like push us forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keegan said that over and over. He's like, we always, he's like, anytime I feel any doubt, we have a call, we meet with a consultant, we meet with, you know, somebody to get their expertise. And at the end of the day, they always say like, we feel like you guys have something here and, um, and we really love the designs and that obviously like is like, okay, like we have something like th- that's all we need to make ourselves keep going. Um, so yeah, I just feel like the feedback and the support has been really nice. That's so cool. Yeah. So your journey to finding your true passion is very inspiring. Can you share maybe do you have a story or share more about that emotional transition during that time? Does anything kind of show up for you when I ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always on an emo- emotional roller coaster <laughs> over here. <laughs> uh, but do you mean like what kind of emotions stirred up when I launched the brand or? Yeah, like when you actually like launched and... Yeah came to this position where you are now like that emotional transition is there like a moment where you're like okay yeah I'm I'm good or is there something still inside you like I feel like one of the things that really kind of was the one of the craziest moments I've ever had was when we went to LA for the photo shoot and I had received a few of the prototypes ahead of time but we were cutting it very close on the jackets and I literally we ubered from our hotel to the place we were picking them up and I seen them firsthand the day before so I was like putting a lot of things Mm -hmm. like leaving them to the last minute and it was so scary and you don't know like you're like how are these people going to react? Mm-hmm. Are they going to like be rude and say like mean things about the clothing? <laughs> like, I don't know. And like, how will it look on? Right. Like, that's one thing for something to look good and have hanger mm, appeal, yes. but for it to actually like fit bodies great. And I can just say hands down, like one of the most amazing feelings of my life 
was when I walked into like the photo shoot and I seen the models in the clothing. It was like the most surreal feeling. I I felt like so emotional and just like all the hard work had been worth it. Um, I felt like this was definitely where I was supposed to be. I was getting like such great feedback and like we joked that the jeans were like the sisterhood of the traveling pants because like everyone who tried them on, they like fit them differently, but they looked good on everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, it was, it was such a crazy moment, but it really was like a pinch me moment to be like all all this hard work and my dream is like coming to fruition. So, so cool. And I'm wearing your jeans right now. Yes. So you're wearing the Georgie jean in the uh, charcoal or faded black. And they are very comfy. I've, you let, these were the pair that you let me wear to Ottawa. Yes. And oh man, I feel like I haven't worn a comfy pair of jeans since until right now, but they are, they're actually, I've done, I'm not just saying that, like, like to your point, the models were even saying like how comfortable they were. They were, and they were made out of, and (laughs) Lulu, (laughs) (laughs) they, so they're made out of hundred percent combed cotton. Um, it's like, one of the highest forms of cotton it's like okay super super soft Mm -hmm. and like they're they're almost like a touch thinner I don't know if that would be like the word like they're they're just so comfortable and they formed your body Uh, but but we've seen models of different waist size try them on now between the two photo shoots and for instance like we had a model her waist was like a 24 25 and so they were baggy on her, but they looked like so good. It's really cool. It just like, yeah. and then we also had a girl who normally wears um, a size larger than the denim, but they just like formed and just looked like a nice form fitting denim. So I don't know. There is yeah. some sort of little magic in those jeans. Yeah. I don't know what combed um, cotton. I didn't even know that was a, you a know term, what? but like just humbling myself right there. Me neither. I got, the, <laughs> I was like, I want a hundred percent cotton. Um, I want it to be like. I want to be competing with the high-end denim labels and then I was like what is this c dot cotton and then of course they explained it to me and I was like I love that we are doing that cool let's proceed but to your yeah they are like well they don't feel thin but I I guess combed cotton is maybe that's why they're so comfy because it doesn't I don't feel like like I I usually hate wearing jeans like all I wear are leggings (laughs) yoga leggings so when I but when I put these on I would actually wear these out yes. and about because Good. it doesn't feel like I'm I don't know bulky or like restricted yeah. yeah yeah and I just I feel like they get better with wear okay. I am like a firm believer and take it how you want mm-hmm. and my mom thinks it's disgusting but I honestly believe like the less you wash your denim the better mm-hmm. um because denim is meant to be like broken in and it gets better with time Obviously, I'm not saying walk around with like dirty jeans, right. but I'm saying the more you wear them and the less you wash them, the better they get. Okay. So, Good to yeah. Um, okay. And then t- tell me about what the Yes. So wearing. you're wearing the Kate pullover and it's this, I feel like it's going to become like literally a wardrobe staple. So I did design it to be available in five different colorways. Uh, it's going to be great to like layer under blazers, go under leather jackets, wear on its own, wear under like, um, a silk slip dress. Mm. It's just super versatile. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you, it's kind of hard to see probably from the Mm -hmm. camera, but the hem on the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the top, it kind of has like a slight ruffle to it. It's just like the perfect amount of feminine detail. Um, it's made out of the same fabric as the two piece, um, tank and skirt set that you were wearing on the first episode. Mm -hmm. It's the eco visco. So it has that stretchy fabric, but retains its shape and kind of just like makes you feel held in. Um, and yes, warm hug. Yeah. And when you receive it, they do just be worn. They do look really small, but they, they're very stretchy, uh, um, but flattering at the same time. I said that about the the two piece outfit. I'm like, you (laughs) gave me the hanger. I was like, uh, I don't think I'm going to fit into that. (laughs) I know when I first got them in, I was like, Oh no, I think they sent us the wrong size, but, um, yeah. So just keep that in mind. And then, um, myself, I am wearing the, uh, Tully cashmere sweater and we have this all over our social media, but 
we do have it designed in three different colors. Uh, originally, we're just going to move forward with the heather gray for right now. If we have enough uh, demand for the other two colors, we will go to production with those as well. But for right now, um, in a couple of weeks, hopefully, it's hard to say, yeah. but hopefully we can launch Exciting. the gray. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, that was a fun episode. It was. <laughs> I know. I feel like we could just like do this I all know. day long. Yeah. It's been <laughs> amazing. I love this. Me I too. love learning about all of this and you as well. So your career voyage led you to the dawn of Ariana Andreas and dreams slowly turning to reality, but every brand has its initial hurdles to leap over. Next week, we're going to get into the early challenges Paige faced and how the brand's vision started materializing. Yeah, so like we mentioned in the first episode, we always love to hear your guys' feedback or comments, um, and we also like to hear your guys' stories. So if you've ever made a significant career shift or you have like some crazy story to tell about how you've led to like your dream job, absolutely share that with us. Um, in the future, if this goes well, we would love to eventually have like guests on our podcast. Oh, so so um, yeah, feel free to share your stories, ask questions, um, and we would love to experience this like with all of you. Yeah. So meet us next week to explore the budding phases of Ariana Andreas and the hurdles Paige leaped to give her dream a shape. Thanks, Paige. Thanks, Brett. <laughs>